In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at optical isomers and their effect on plane polarised light. Now, we already know that optical isomers essentially have identical chemical properties and also identical physical properties such as their boiling point, melting point, etc. Except for one key feature. An optical isomer is able to rotate the plane of polarised light. Okay, optical isomers rotate the plane of polarised light. Now you have two optical isomers. One optical isomer will rotate the light by the same amount, but in one direction. And funnily enough, the other optical isomer will rotate the light by the same amount, but in the opposite direction. So they behave in a mirror image way in the way that they change the path of the plane polarised light as well. The only way we can test if we have a single optical isomer is by doing an experiment. This experiment would involve having a sample of unpolarised light where the light is travelling in all directions, vibrating in all planes. An example of this would be just a torch or light box. Then we need a polarizer. A good example would be polarized sunglasses, or you can get a piece of polarized glass, a square piece of polarized glass. And the way that polarized sunglasses work is most of these light waves will be bounced back, and a few are allowed through and it only lets a couple of wavelengths through, a couple of um, directions through of your light in a single direction. So light traveling in a single direction is known as polarized light. It's monochromatic if you've also only got one color being filtered through your polarizer. The third stage of your experiment would be to have a sample container. It would need to be either a flat bottomed a beaker or a cuvette with a flat bottom. You don't want a piece of glass which has a curve because that will lens and mess up your results. So you have your sample, you'd have a control solution first, and then you would put your solution of what you think is your single optical isomer in your beaker and you would shine your polarised light through it. If you have a single optical isomer in your solution, the direction of the light waves will be changed. And that's what the optical isomer is doing. The second polarizer is used to monitor the change in angle. Okay, so we have our sample of unpolarized light. We can polarise it by placing a polarised piece of glass on top of the light. If it's positioned at exactly 90 degrees, so square to the light or to how you're measuring it, you can then have an angle, a line up here. This is to help you measure the angle. Now, without anything in between, we can use a second polariser to completely block out and interfere with all of the polarised light waves. So when you get to the point of maximum darkness, you know that you've got maximum interference. And you'll note that we turn it clockwise and the second polariser will block out all the light polarised light waves from the first polariser at an angle of 90 degrees. We can then use a control solution to show the effect that water has on polarised light waves. It should be none because water is not a chiral molecule. So again, you would have the control solution clamped so it's 
um, still. Don't have the presenter holding it because it's going to wobble everywhere. And then you turn the, the polarised filter again and at exactly 90 degrees it should block out oh, all of the light. There you go. So we know the control solution doesn't have any effect on the plain polarised light. It's just the same as it was with air. Okay, in this first beaker, I've got a fairly saturated, quite a lot of sugar dissolved in water. Now sugar, naturally occurring sugar, exists as a single optical isomer, as do nearly all, in fact, all molecules in nature exist as single optical isomers. Sugar's a easily obtainable example. So here's sugar. And if you place the solution of sugar over the um, plain polarised light and you rotate, rotate the glasses, rotate them clockwise, you will see that it doesn't actually block out until there we go. No, I can't because it's not in a clamp. I can't mark it until there. So at a different point, it's about just for my eye, it's about 60 degrees. And actually, sugar solution does rotate clockwise by 66 degrees. And you can just mark it to illustrate that relative to your, well, it's probably about there to me relative to your normal there. So, okay, so you've seen today that a single sample of a single optical isomer will rotate plain polarised light in a single direction, either a particular angle clockwise or a particular angle anti-clockwise. And this can be used as a method of testing if, um, for example, honey has been doctored with corn syrup, because that will change the overall rotation of the honey. And it can be used in other tests as well to see exactly what, for example, amino acids you have in a solution.